Hey everybody, this is Andre here with the Kevin Breeze channel, and in this video, we're going to be comparing the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2021 to the LG Stylo 6. Now to get some more information on the pricing and availability of these devices, be sure to check the link in the description because that'll take you to all of that. That being said, let's get started. So the Motorola Moto G Stylus has a 6.8 inch IPS LCD display with a resolution of 1080p, a PPI of 386, an aspect ratio of 20 by 9, and a screen to body ratio of 84.8%. The LG Stylus 6 also has a 6.8 inch IPS LCD display with a resolution of 1080p, a PPI of 395, an aspect ratio of 20.5 by 9, and a screen to body ratio of 82.5%. Both are really good and they both have pretty large displays, but you can definitely tell that the Moto G Stylus with the thinner bezels does look a little bit more modern, whereas the LG Stylo 6 with the thicker bezels and the design of the front facing camera looks a little bit more clunky. Now speaking of the front facing cameras, the Moto G Stylus has a 16 megapixel front facing camera, and with this hole punch design, it really does add to the look and make it look a lot nicer and cleaner. The LG Stylo 6 has a 13 megapixel front facing camera and it does have a water drop notch for the front facing camera. I'm definitely not a big fan of this look, especially with the thicker bezels. It really makes the phone look older. More manufacturers are moving away from this look and I hope that in the future LG does the same with this phone. Now the Moto G Stylus is getting 128 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD expansion and the LG Stylo 6 is getting 64 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD expansion. Now this is definitely a big difference. These two phones are at a similar level and the Moto G Stylus has double the internal storage and with that kind of difference it's really easy to notice. So right now both phones have basic apps on them and the system of course. 19.71 gigabytes on the Moto G Stylus is taking up only 15% of the storage whereas 23.73 gigabytes which is not a whole lot more on the LG Stylo 6 is taking up 37% of the storage. You can definitely see here roughly the same amount of space is taking up more than double the space on the LG Stylo 6 as it is on the Moto G Stylus. So definitely that difference in storage is going to matter a lot. No matter what your situation is, even if you only take a few photos and videos here and there, no matter what your situation is, more storage is going to be better, especially if you take a lot of photos and videos or maybe have larger apps or just a lot of apps in general. It's always good to have more storage. For me, 64 gigabytes is a good minimum, so the LG Stylo 6 isn't bad when it comes to storage, especially considering an entry-level iPhone that's a lot more expensive than this phone does start at 64 gigabytes itself and doesn't have micro SD expansion at all. The LG Stylo 6 in that regard really isn't bad, but for the same level, the Moto G Stylus is definitely going to have an edge here with double the internal storage. It really is going to make a difference. Now both of these phones have fingerprint scanners which is really nice. The Moto G Stylus has the best location in my opinion for a fingerprint scanner and that is right here on the power button. It's a great location. When you're unlocking your phone, whether you do it on purpose or by habit or whatever the case may be, you're most likely gonna touch your power button anyway. So having the fingerprint scanner right there really helps to make it really fast and convenient. The only other situation where it might be as fast is if you're using face unlock, tap the screen and it happens to be pointing right at your face, then maybe it might open just as fast, but you can't do that in your pocket. Whereas with the fingerprint scanner, you can. And speaking of face unlock, the Moto G Stylus does have it, which is great. I really like having both options because in some situations, one may be more convenient than the other. If you're doing something hands-free and still need to unlock your phone, whereas if you have your phone in your pocket, it's nice to have both because then you'll be able to alternate between them. The LG Stylo 6 does have a fingerprint scanner as well. But unfortunately, this phone doesn't have face unlock, so that is a little bit of an edge that the Moto G Stylus does have over this phone. It is nice to have both options, and unfortunately, this only has one, but at least it does have a fingerprint scanner. It's not in quite as good of a location, but it's still pretty good. It's going to be right here. It's pretty comfortable. Your finger is going to rest around that area anyway, so really, it's not a bad thing. 
Let's go ahead and give these fingerprint scanners a try and see how they work. So starting with the Moto G stylus, one more time. As you can see, it's really fast and responsive. Not a whole lot to say about it, it just works really well. Now we're gonna test out the fingerprint scanner for the LG Stylo 6. One more time. There we go. So really both of them work really well. I have no complaints, but I just do really like the location of the fingerprint scanner on the Moto G Stylus. I think it's really great. I think it's the best possible location for a fingerprint scanner, really hard to beat. And I definitely hope that manufacturers start moving the fingerprint scanners there in future phones as well. Now, taking a look at the camera setup of these phones, the Moto G Stylus comes with a 48 megapixel rear camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera, and a 2 megapixel macro camera. The LG Stylus 6 has a 13 megapixel rear camera, a 5 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a 5 megapixel depth sensing camera. So right away we can tell the Moto G Stylus does have a few advantages over the LG Stylus 6. It has a higher megapixel rear camera, which we'll see in the demonstration if that actually translates to a higher quality. It also has a macro camera, which the LG Stylo 6 doesn't. Now the LG Stylo 6 does seem to have a higher megapixel depth sensing camera, which means that portrait mode might be a little bit better. But again, we will see how that actually plays out in practice. So this is the normal camera mode for the Moto G Stylus. The image does look really good. The picture is crisp and the colors are well balanced, so no complaints there. We're going to go into ultra wide now. Ultra wide mode looks really nice. There's really not a lot of distortion or blurriness. It still looks just as crisp as the normal camera mode. We're in macro mode now and it does look really high quality. You can definitely get those close up details without any type of distortion or blurriness. And a lot of the time I've noticed macro cameras, especially on mid-level phones, does tend to have a really obnoxious glare coming from the outside no matter what the lighting is. And in this situation, we're really not getting that. So I really like that about this phone. It seems to control the exposure really well. Now this is the front facing camera for the Moto G Stylus. It does look really nice. I don't really have any complaints about it. The colors are well balanced. The image is crisp. Overall, it's definitely a good front facing camera that I would say is really usable. We are now in portrait mode for the Moto G Stylus. It definitely looks nice. The background is blurred appropriately. And right here, you're actually able to control the blur of the background, which is a really nice feature that I like. When you're taking a photo of any kind, really, I always say it's better to have as much control over the different aspects of the photo as you possibly can. So being able to control the blur is a really nice thing that even some higher end phones like iPhones, for example, don't have. So that's really nice to see it on this phone. So we are now in the regular camera mode for the Moto G Stylo 6. The image is definitely not as crisp and the colors really aren't as great. I would say it's decently usable as a camera, but for professional purposes, I don't think that I would use this. It's just not quite as high quality as I would expect out of a camera that I was using for serious purposes. This is the ultra wide mode for the phone. So definitely I would say the Moto G Stylus is a little bit wider on the ultra wide than the LG Stylo 6. It's not so noticeable if you have them individually, but side by side, I can definitely see the difference. As you can see here, this was taken at basically the same angle with the ultra wide camera. And for sure, the Moto G Stylus is definitely a little bit wider than the LG Stylo 6. Other than that, there's not really any distortion on it. It doesn't have any warped edges, which is good. There's not really a whole lot of blurriness or distortion compared to the normal image. So other than it not being quite as wide as the Moto G Stylus, it's pretty decent. This is the front facing camera for the LG Stylo 6. Compared to the Moto G Stylus, it's definitely not really that great. It's not blurry per se, but it's really not crisp at all either. I wouldn't use this camera for serious purposes, maybe to snap a few selfies here and there, but I wouldn't use it for something like content creation. If you're posting on social media for a business purpose or anything like that, taking pictures for website streaming, whatever you might be using the front facing camera for, if it's for a professional setting where you really have to present those pictures and they really have to be on point, I wouldn't use this camera for it. We're now in portrait mode with the LG Stylo 6. 
The background is blurred appropriately. I don't really think that it tracks the subject that well. Now, the camera in between me and the phone isn't really helping a whole lot, but at the same time, I think the Motorola Moto G Stylus did do a better job than this phone. So that's something to keep in mind. Again, you can control the blur, which I really like, and that's really nice. You can get the blur down to almost pretty much nothing, and then you can get it all the way up to super blurry and yeah, I really like that, but the colors really aren't that good. I feel like they look a little bit drained, whereas the colors on the Moto G Stylus were pretty strong. So overall, the camera is usable if you're just using it casually, but if you're actually trying to get any type of quality out of it, then I would not use this camera for it. So as we saw in that demonstration, I definitely think the Moto G Stylus does have a very clear advantage over the LG Stylo 6 as far as the camera goes. Not only are pretty much all the features in the rear camera better, and the Moto G Stylus has a macro camera, whereas the LG Stylo 6 doesn't, but the front-facing camera was also way better. I can just tell in every way that I compared them, the Moto G Stylus definitely has a much better camera. In fact, the camera for this phone is good enough to the point where I would be comfortable using it for some types of content creation, whereas with the LG Stylo 6, I really wouldn't. Now another thing to keep in mind about the cameras of these phones is the video mode. Now the Moto G Stylus is able to shoot in 4K on the rear camera and 1080p for the front camera, whereas the LG Stylo 6 is only able to shoot in 1080p in both the rear and the front camera. So when it comes to video, again, the Moto G Stylus does have the advantage. Now internally, the Moto G Stylus is getting 4GB of RAM with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 678 processor. I ran a Geekbench 5 benchmark test on this phone, and it came back with a single core score of 538 and a multi-core score of 1588. The LG Stylo 6 is getting 4GB of RAM with the MediaTek Helio P35 processor. One thing I'm going to point out about the LG Stylo 6 is that this specific phone in my hand is the unlocked variant. If you get it through a carrier, there is going to be a little bit of a difference in performance, and that is because the carrier provided version does have 3 gigabytes of RAM, so it is a little bit different there, but for the purposes of this video, I am using the unlocked version. On the Geekbench 5 benchmark test for the LG Stylo 6, we get a single core score of 170 and a multi-core score of 964. So there's definitely a huge difference here. The Moto G Stylus is definitely going to be a lot faster than the LG Stylo 6. And looking at these scores, it's faster by a lot too. So whether you're using your phone for just basic activities like web browsing and sending text messages and making calls and stuff, or if you're doing more high-end activities, your high-end activities or even mid-level activities are going to be pretty limited on the LG Stylo 6. Like, you might be able to do some content creation like photo editing and that kind of stuff. And then, of course, your content consumption like video streaming. But if you try to do something like video editing and gaming on this phone, then it's probably going to struggle a bit. Whereas with the Moto G Stylus, it might not be the best phone for those types of heavy activities, but it'll do a lot better than the LG Stylus 6. So we could talk about numbers all day long, but one way to really see the difference in speed of these phones is to see it in action. So we're gonna test it out a bit. We're gonna start with Google Chrome. And we see here, the Moto G Stylus did pull up a bit quicker than the LG Stylo 6. It was fairly close, but it was very clear that the Moto G Stylus did pull it up faster. We're gonna try a web page real quick. Again, the Moto G Stylus did pull it up a little bit faster. Let's try one more web page. So that time, as you could see, the Moto G Stylus pulled up the web page a lot faster. There's no question here. It's definitely the faster phone. The LG Stylo 6 is not bad, but if you're really doing a lot of web browsing, a lot of content consumption, like streaming videos and that sort of thing, you're definitely gonna see a difference here. And if that's your primary purpose of your device, then the Moto G Stylus is probably gonna give you a bit better experience. Now, both of these phones have 4,000 milliamp hour batteries, but the difference is, 
the Moto G Stylus supports 10 watt fast charging, while the LG Stylus 6 doesn't have fast charging. So that's one thing to keep in mind, but it is a really little detail. So I would say generally in terms of overall performance, these batteries are pretty much the same. Now finally, the most unique feature about these two phones that they do have in common is their styluses. We're gonna test out both of them and see how they work. So the Moto G stylus has a pop-out stylus. You just push it here and it comes out. It does feel really nice. It's really responsive. I don't have any problems with it. I don't feel any lag or anything like that. The actual drawing part is pretty good. Of course, it's not gonna be like a real pen and it's not gonna be crazy responsive like something like the Galaxy Note Ultra, which is a lot higher end than this, but it does get the job done. It does seem pretty good. Now we're gonna see the stylus for the LG Stylo 6. Same design, you just push it here and it pops right out. It is a little bit slower than the Moto G Stylus, but it's still not really bad. And you're just doing quick motions, it does show up pretty easily. But when you do something like this, it will lag a little bit, but not that much. I do like the sound effect. It gives it more of an authentic vibe. As far as navigation and all that using the stylus, it's about the same. Not a whole lot to say about it, it works. I don't sense any lag or anything like that. It's basically the same as swiping your finger on the screen. I would say overall, I don't have any complaints about it. So both of the styluses worked really well. Of course, they didn't have the quality of a flagship phone like the Note 20 Ultra during the drawing part. As you could see, there was a little bit of lag, not really that much. It was very responsive and I was overall pretty satisfied. Now in conclusion, which one of these phones is better? In terms of overall specs and performance and what we've seen on the phones, I would say the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2021 is the better phone. Not only does it have better specs, but I've actually tested them and seen that it does perform better. I do like the features of the camera a lot better too. The Moto G Stylus has a very usable camera that you could probably use for professional purposes like content creation. Whereas the LG Stylo 6, I don't really like that camera. It's kind of blurry, it's pretty low quality. You can definitely tell, especially from the front facing camera, that it's really not a great camera. And of course, during the speed test, the Moto G Stylus was clearly faster. Definitely, if you're doing something like heavy content consumption, browsing the web a lot, that sort of thing, you're gonna want a bit of a faster phone for that. And the Moto G Stylus was really satisfactory as far as that speed goes. The styluses were about the same, so I wouldn't say that's a really big deciding factor between these two devices. But finally, with the overall design of these two phones, I think the Moto G Stylus has a much nicer looking design that's gonna be a lot more timeless. Having smaller bezels, a more sleek design in general, and the hole punch front facing camera, are all things that's gonna help it look a lot more modern, a lot more high end. Whereas with the LG Stylo 6, it has noticeably thicker bezels. It feels really clunky when you hold it. And that water drop notch is just not a good look. It takes unnecessary space on the screen, makes it a weird shape, and is just generally not as good looking. So I would say at the end of the day, the Motorola Moto G Stylus is just a better phone. Now that being said, the LG Stylo 6 is not a bad phone, and if you can get a good deal on it, and you're just using it for basic activities, light web use, maybe some content consumption, that kind of thing, then you'd probably be okay with it. That being said, if you want to get any more information on the prices and availability, be sure to check the links in the description because prices and availability are always changing. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.